The new version of Logic has a fantastic sends on faders and independent pan function that really enhances our mixing flexibility when we're working in Logic's mixer. So what does this do exactly? Well, sometimes you may want to adjust the stereo pan that a send is routing to an aux separately from the panning of the main channel strip. So you can use this for, let's say you're panning an instrument one way and you want to send it to an effect panned in an opposite direction. And I'm going to show you that as my first example. Another way you might use it is sending either a mono or a stereo channel strip to a surround aux for an interesting sound design. And you can also use it to pan instruments separately in a headphone mix than where they're panned in the main mix. So let me just jump right in and set up an example for you. I've got a simple drummer groove here. I'm going to add a part that I want to affect and pan in different directions. So I'm going to go to the claps. This one over here, I'm just going to record a simple part. All right, so we have that. And it's nice and dry. Let me turn the click off. And we're going to go into the mixer now. We've got the drum kit expanded. Let me find this track. I believe it's this one. So what I'm going to do to start with is set up a send, just a regular send, a vanilla send. I'm going to go to bus 7, an unused bus, and it'll create an aux over there. And I'll just start by putting in a little bit of reverb. Let's go up here. And I'll just call it Space Designer. And I'll call up Preset. Let's go to medium spaces, plates, blue plate, and just leave that for a moment. Let's go back here and let's just dial some of that up. All right, so it sounds as we expect. Now I can pan the dry signal. And the panning of the send follows the panning of the channel strip but we can now control the two independently. I'm gonna click here and choose independent pan. You'll see some other new settings as well, which we'll explore. And right now we don't see anything differently. It's panned the same way as this is by default. But what we can do is enter the new sends on faders mode. And when we're in this mode, the volume knob will then control the volume to the send and the pan knob controls the pan type and the position to the send. So there's four ways we can get into the sends on faders mode. From the send pop-up menu, we can choose sends on faders, and you'll see that they turn a different color. Let me just turn that off for a moment and show you the other ways. We can also control click on an aux track and then choose send on faders from the shortcut menu. So here's the destination aux with that reverb on it. I can right click on there and choose sends on faders and it enables the mode the same way. And again, I'll just turn it off momentarily from there. And the third way that we can do it is pressing the sends on faders button in the mixer menu. And that's the easiest because it's right there. And then we control which of the sends we're controlling. And I'll just turn it off for a moment to show you the fourth way, which is by key command. So I'm going to open the key command window. And here I've typed in sends here. And there's new key commands for turning the sends on faders on and off. And as well as some other key commands for moving to the next send, the previous send, cycling through them, and then cycling through the returns. So let's pan the claps all the way this way, or not all the way, but most of the way there. I'm going to turn this on, and now I can pan the send independently so I can have that reverb going to the other side. And I can use this to control the volume of the send, the amount of the send. So there's just the dry signal panned one way. Now they're panned together. We can also use the independent pan feature to change the type of pan, not just the position. Now here I've got a mono guitar track sending to Stereo Space Designer. And that behaves as expected, the pan on the sense is following the pan on the channel strip. And I'm going to turn on independent pan and then 
sends on faders. And of course, we can control the two of them separately now. So the draw signal remains in the center as the reverb send is panned. But I can also change the pan type. Now I'm going to go to this return track, the space designer, and I'm going to convert it to surround. And you'll see that I now have the surround version of space designer. And I'm going to right click here and turn this into a surround pan. So I have a mono track and with independent pan on sense to fader, I can now send to the discrete sub channels of this surround space designer. So as I move the puck around, you'll see the five different meters receiving different amounts of signal. And I can play with the front to back by moving this puck closer or farther from the center. So I can really get some nice kind of spatial sound design happening. Sending more there. Sending there. Front to back. So now I like that. And I can turn off independent pan and I can pan the dry signal separately if I want to. So let's turn this off. And you'll see when this is off, the pan knob disappears, even though we're in sends on faders mode. But I'm going to turn this off as well. And now I can pan this separately. So there's a lot more routing flexibility. We'll continue with more in the next video.